What's going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and welcome back to Let's Create an Action Role Playing Game using Unreal Engine 4. So in today's video we're gonna be overhauling the enemy AI all over again. Okay, so I decided to start over with the enemy AI, like the entire behavior tree and make it all one long video. So we are gonna create a new folder called AI Behavior. and we're gonna start it all over one by one so we're gonna start with the AI controller or, or yeah the behavior tree I'm gonna call it AI behavior or you know I don't know AI or you know what enemy behavior tree and we're also going to create a new blackboard which is also going to be called I don't know enemy blackboard And we're gonna create a, a new AI controller. So in the blueprint class, you add in an AI controller, the tour crowd AI controller, and select. I'm gonna call it enemy. Come on. Slash or underscore AI. And yeah, this is all we need for now. And also the enemy characters. Uh, I'm gonna remove both of those from here and create a new one. So I'm gonna create a new folder called garbage. And I'm gonna throw it all, like I'm gonna delete it later. But for now, in case I need them, I'll just put them in the garbage folder. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to do the random roaming for the enemy and I think we're not gonna do the patrolling in this video because probably everything will stay the same but for now let's start by opening the behavior tree <coughs> and we have the new behavior tree and it's completely empty but don't be scared now we're gonna start by choosing the new blackboard which is called enemy blackboard and after the root we're gonna do a sequence the sequence will have a task which is move to and wait so we move to the location we want then we wait but to tell it which location i'm gonna add something new called a service so actually i want to check out something in my old behavior tree yeah this was its own task and no wait that wasn't it here, this one. Yeah, it's almost the same. I guess we could do it as a, you know, like this. Yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah, I think I'm gonna move this and delete the service. Yeah, it's better to use it like this. So I'm just gonna delete the service and delete the move to and from the garbage I'm gonna take it out which is find random location I'm gonna move it there oh okay yeah I'm just gonna delete this the new one the blackboard key we're gonna make a brand new one which is gonna be called I don't know we're gonna create a vector and it's gonna be called random location and save and we just want to put it here where is it oh no not this one okay i'm gonna close the old behavior tree to avoid confusion and yeah over here the blackboard key is gonna be called random location and right now we can try this out i think but we are gonna delete this old enemy oh i forgot one thing 
in the enemy AI controller. From the begin play, we want to run behavior tree. And the behavior tree asset will be the new one, which is enemy behavior tree and compile. And right now, we don't want to use the same enemies. So we are going to create from the BP base, you want to right click and create child blueprint class. I'm going to call this BP enemy. I don't think they allow us. Oh, they do. Okay, great. So yeah, this is the new enemy and we're going to go inside and change the AI controller to be the one we are. We just made, which is enemy AI and compile. And let's hit play to see if it works. Okay, so I know what the problem is. I actually forgot to add the move to task, which is a big problem. And yeah, if you save now and try it out, it's probably gonna work. Yeah, it does. All right. So now we have an enemy that free roams around the map, which is great. As you can see, she's just walking around and we can attack her. And yeah, this is basically what an NPC is. Uh, so yeah, now that we're done with the first part, let's continue by making the enemy chase us and attack us. So we're gonna go back to the AI controller and so we're gonna add an AI perception stimuli source and we're gonna add it over here, which is sight. Oh, wait, no, not this one. Uh, no, the normal AI perception. And we're gonna add the, for the senses config, we're gonna add sight. And for the sense, we wanna change these three to be ticked because they don't work. So now that we've added that, we, we wanna get this on target perception updated. So when the enemy sees the target, this is what happens. We are gonna get the controlled pawn. And get the party. The, the yeah, it will be connected to this. So when we, when they see us, we get the party. We ask, is an enemy? The target is the actor and the party is the party number. If it's true, we add a branch. Wait one moment. And if it's true, we're going to do something new. So hey, let's start over. On target perception, we ask we get what the party number is, if he is an enemy, if it's true, we want to get detected. So we are going to create a new function in our interface. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a brand new interface just for the enemies. So yeah, we're going to create a blueprint interface. Sorry, my keyboard is very far. Enemy, yeah. I call it BP interface enemy. And we're gonna add a new function, which is called get detected. And we're gonna create another one called set detected. And we are gonna create a variable, an input called detected for the set detected and the get detected will get the same one but an output and we're gonna compile. Now we're gonna go to the enemy blueprint and add a variable also called detected and we're gonna add the interface so yeah go to the class settings and add the BP interface enemy and compile and over here under the interfaces there should be the get detected 
So you just open it like this and drag the detected and put it here and it should work. And as for the set detected, we are going to put it in the event graph. So we just set detected like this and type an event detected event set detected and just connect it like this now we're gonna go back to our AI controller and if it's true we're gonna set detected the target is the control spawn and this one will be over here you want to split this struct pin and stimulus successfully sensed will be the detected and you know once the enemies detected us what we're gonna do is we are gonna uh get our weapon on and you know maybe i should just rename this function i don't know if it would cause any problems but i think i'm gonna try so yeah the the yeah before i rename it let's just continue this so the drone will happen if it senses us and the target will be the control spawn and compile but yeah i'm just gonna go to the interface character actions and try to rename it i really hope it doesn't cause us any problems where is it yeah weapon on I'm just gonna rename it to draw weapon please work yeah it didn't cause any problems let's see here yeah much better okay so let's try it out and see if it works it does not okay okay so i figured it out why it didn't detect us and that is because i forgot to add a party number for my new enemy character so i'm gonna make it one and my player is minus one so let's try it out and see if it works please work please work it still does not okay so we are still gonna try something else out and we're gonna try to get it to work okay so i figured out my problem oh my god that was so stupid of me so i'm gonna revert everything to the way it was before i changed stuff and what was working wasn't actually the perception it was the draw weapon itself it wasn't working until i copied it from the bp base so i took the macro and opened it and copied everything inside of it to the this this one and now i know why it wasn't working so i think yeah i copied everything and connected it to event draw weapon but i am gonna disconnect it and i'm gonna try adding the BP interface character actions to the AI controller and I don't know if it if it's gonna work or not let's see no it does not okay so I'm gonna stick with my old plan but I'm gonna change the name of the event from draw weapon to enemy draw weapon and I'm actually gonna make it in the brand new blueprint interface so we gonna we're gonna add a new function called enemy draw weapon and we're just gonna make it the same as the old one so let's open that and yeah we have drawn which is a boolean yeah like this and now in our new enemy character we're gonna add an event enemy draw weapon and we're just gonna do it like this and all of this I'm also gonna make it a macro just like the one in our BP base 
So collapse to macro and the name is gonna be enemy draw weapon M which stands for macro and you know the 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 you know the gain from copying your blueprints to the enemy character is that you can actually change the animations independently from the main character so whenever your enemy draws a weapon uh yeah you can change the animation in case you actually change the entire enemy character model which is probably the case so yeah we prefer yeah we're gonna do that soon once we start making our game like the actual part of the game the game game and yeah we're gonna change all of the animations for the enemy and the entire character so yeah we don't we it's good that we created a different macro for the enemy draw weapon now let's test it out and it's not working anymore okay so there's something i forgot to say oh yeah this one okay okay so just type in enemy draw weapon here you go and the control spawn is this the condition is the sensed and i'll delete the old one like this let's try it out yeah it works and as you can see she can now draw the weapon and when i leave her side she puts it back that's perfect great yeah that's perfect now we're gonna save everything before we get started on something else so now we are gonna make the enemy actually chase us and when they see us like i mean when they see us they chase us so yeah that's what we're gonna do right now so back in our ai controller wait am i recording yeah <laughs> i would have i don't know gone insane so in our ai controller we're gonna actually clean up a little bit i added this while testing i'm just gonna delete it and i'm gonna connect the behavior tree again and this i added two variables which are the enemy and the pawn we don't need them and compile and now we have this clean clean code and one more thing we can do is add a lock on you know what let's not do it right now we're gonna do it later this is the detection so i'm gonna comment on this i'm gonna call it detect player and yeah this is what happens when they see us they detect us now we're gonna go create the chasing okay so to make the enemy chase us what we want to do is we actually want to create a, another sequence actually before the sequence we want to add a selector and from it we have two sequences which is the one for roaming or searching around and the other one will be for the you know chasing the player and seeing them so we we are gonna add another sequence so yeah since this one's for searching i'm just gonna or what roaming i'm just gonna change the sequence name to roaming and the other one is i don't know what do we call it chasing And what we're gonna do now is we are actually gonna set whether the play the enemy sees us based on whether they have you know a boolean whether if it's true or not so we're gonna go to the blackboard and create a new key type boolean I'm gonna call it scene 
and then we are going to go back to the behavior tree and we need to add blackboard decorator like bla blackboard based conditions on both of them so we're going to add one on the roaming add decorator blackboard the enemy will be roaming or will be chasing us based on this blackboard based condition which is based on our blackboard key which is seen so you want to choose the blackboard key seen and the key query is not set so if this is false he will not follow us if it's set then he will start chasing us and we can also change the names of the decorators so i'm just gonna type in scene oh sorry not scene and scene on the other one and we also want to add this to the AI controller so in our AI enemy I don't know did I show this part where I commented I don't remember I actually recorded half of this video last night and the other half today so yeah we want to get a blackboard Well, not a blackboard, we want to get the blackboard. And then we want to set value as a boolean. And the va the boolean name, we are going to type in make liter literal name, which is going to be the name of our blackboard key. I've named it scene in my case. And connect it after the true. The boolean value will be whether the enemy is looking at us or not. And we are also going to add this same one for the hearing. So if we are running around behind the enemy, they will turn and find us. So I'm just going to move it over here so that we can reuse it later. Or do we have to copy it? Yeah, I think we have to copy it. I'm not sure. No problem. And yeah, now we're going to mark over here on the tasks. And services so now we are gonna add the task to move to the location but we still didn't tell it to get a location so instead of finding a random location we are gonna create a something based on the player location or rather based on the enemies enemies location so instead uh, if you have like a companion character and the enemy sees it it could attack it if it's the if it's not on the same team as the enemy itself so to do that we are gonna create a new service we can create a task instead for the getting the location but we are gonna do a service this time and we are gonna started with an event or just type in activation yeah event receive activation ai and before we get started on this we need to do something and that is we need to specify that the actor like this actor which the enemy sees is the locked like a like is its own variable so that they can get like so that we can get its location so from this actor what we're gonna do is we are gonna create a variable type actor and we're gonna call it locked onto and we want to set it now where do we set it okay yeah I think it doesn't matter mm, 
Mm, I don't know. Yeah, over here. And the actor will be the variable, like what what it, what it sets as. And then we are gonna go to the new blueprint interface, which is for the enemy. And we're gonna create a new function for that, which is also gonna be called, I don't know, yeah, locked onto, or rather, get locked onto and the output is gonna be locked onto let's compile oh the type is gonna be an actor let's compile and over here in our AI controller we are gonna create the variable again oh I learned I already created it while testing this stuff but oh wait I didn't uh, oh okay we don't have to create it again uh, I created it like five minutes ago so yeah we're gonna go to the oh we're gonna add the blueprint interface for the enemy so here it is blueprint interface enemy and now over here under the interfaces there should be get locked onto you open it and you set this like put it over here as the return node for get locked onto so right now this variable is what the enemy is locked onto whenever they see something that that's like in another team so yeah now we're gonna go back to our service okay so i renamed this get i renamed this new task to get player location service and what we're gonna do now is we are gonna add it as a service for our move to so get player location service we open it and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the variable that we've just made which is whatever enemy the character is seeing so we want to get locked onto and we want to hook up the target to the owner and we're gonna create a new variable which is called bb key and we want to get this bb key and then we want to set blackboard value as an object the value will be the same locked onto and we want to go back to the behavior tree and we want to add a wait did i save yeah okay yeah over here we want to add a blackboard key now we want to create a brand new one which is an object we're gonna call this enemy and the key type will be an actor and save now when we go back to the behavior tree we should be able to see it so I think it's gonna work now let's try it out and see if it does wait let me turn down my computer because the game is gonna make a lot of noises and it's gonna ruin the video again <laughs> oh wait no this shouldn't even be open so yeah I'm just gonna delete the patrol path I made earlier and hit play come on not strong okay I'll fix it just ignore this part <laughs> just want to remove all of the errors 
like this. Oh my god, just leave me alone. Yeah, there's also one more that I need to fix. I don't know why they started working. They're not supposed to. I guess it doesn't matter. We're just gonna make it work. We don't care about the old one. So yeah, she's roaming. And when she sees us, she picks up her weapon and follows us. Wait, she's just like that? Girl, see us. Wait, why is she on the same patrol path? It shouldn't be like that. No, she's not. Okay. So we're gonna go to the behavior tree again. And there is something we can try, and that is the blackboard decorators. We want to change the observer aboard to self for both, I think. And let's see if it works now. Yeah, she don't chase us. She just stops whenever she sees us. Okay, so I found out why it wasn't working. I forgot to make this instance editable and I forgot to set it over here in the get player location service. So we re we choose we change the BB key to enemy. And also one more thing, I'm I'm going to change the service name because it no longer gets the player location it gets the enemy location so whatever enemy of the enemy it has so yeah we're just gonna get enemy location service and did it get changed come on check yeah all right i really hope it's working now Okay, so we walk towards her. She's not seeing us yet. Come on, notice us. Yay, it's working now. She chases us with her sword out. And if we walk behind her, she stops chasing us or she doesn't. Oh yeah, I think we added the lock on. So she's not going to stop chasing us until we hide behind the wall or something. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, this is much better than before. Why is she not walking back anymore? Yeah, because she's chasing us, so she doesn't really stop chasing. Even if we are really close. That's why she's always moving forward and she doesn't walk back when we attack her. So we're not gonna fix that right now, actually. We're gonna work on the attacking. So yeah, I really like it like this. It's great. Wait, is there an issue? Why is her sword out? Yeah, she forgot to put it back. No problem. Put it back. Yeah, she did. Alright, great. We can fix any issues later. As long as it works, that's great. So to get attacking working, it's gonna be really simple. We are gonna go back to our behavior tree and we're gonna create a brand new task. And we are gonna rename it quickly. We're gonna call it... Attack enemy task because you know we are the enemy's enemy and it might have other enemies like npcs and stuff so yeah also the get random location i'm gonna rename the end of it to task so that we don't get it confused with the service now yeah back in our behavior tree after we move to like after the enemy chases us we're gonna add to the same sequence the new task which is attack enemy task and 
we're gonna open it and it's gonna be very simple so we're gonna start with an event execute receive AI and we're gonna end with an event completion so what was it called yeah I'll just type in receive wait what's, what was it called I don't know let me check complete Oh my god, this is so, so stupid. Okay, I'm going back to the be behavior tree and checking this one. Yeah, finish execute. Oh my god, that was so stupid of me. I don't know, suddenly I get very stupid. But yeah, I'm keeping track of a lot of things here. So yeah. And we want to end it with a success. But we still don't have the what we want to do. So the best way to do it, I think, is to copy the attacking from the BP base to the enemy and the reason we're going to do that for now we're just gonna copy the light attacks or I don't know yeah let's copy both we're gonna copy the light I actually don't need this anymore yeah. and this one yeah, we're gonna copy the light and heavy attacks, both nodes, and we're gonna go back to our enemy blueprint, which we created in this video at the beginning, and we're gonna paste them here, and they're called light attack 2 and heavy attacks 2, so we're gonna rename them to be called, I don't know, enemy light attack, and the other one enemy heavy attack and you don't have to be like very strict with the same naming that I'm doing I know I can get it confusing and now in our enemy interface we're gonna create both of them as functions so we are gonna name them also enemy light attack and the other one enemy heavy attack and yeah if your enemy has more than like if your enemy only has one attack you can do it no problem and wait let me check something in my other like in my player interface yeah I'm gonna delete this enemy attack function we don't need it anymore also the light attack, we're not gonna need it. I'm gonna put this in combat. Yeah, and combat. Now we're back in our new, like the enemy interface. And yeah, we're not gonna need any inputs or outputs. We're gonna go back to the enemy event. And we want the AI, like the task to alternate between both of them like the enemy li like the light and heavy attacks and so we are gonna make them yeah we're gonna connect them to the functions that we've made in the new interface wait let me close up some stuff we can also add blocking yeah if you have enemies that block we can do it yeah let's just do it where is it? Yeah, BP enemy. Like this. And I'm gonna call it enemy blocking. And the reason I've copied them and didn't use the same ones in the BP base is because we are gonna be, you know, changing the animations for the enemies when we replace the character so it's gonna be very simple when you replace the character just go in here and change it from the select node so yeah that's great but we want to add like this we want to do the same thing as the draw weapon which is at the event that we've made so I'm gonna type in event light attack and get the event enemy light attack and just connect it here and check inside yeah it's great for now I mean we're gonna improve it later and you know whenever we do edits to the main character we can just copy them and replace them here doesn't matter and we're also gonna type in event heavy 
attack and connect it and type in event blocking wait event enemy oh okay i forgot to to add the blocking to the interface so i'm going to create a new function call it enemy blocking and compile and now when i go to the enemy blocking i can just type in event enemy blocking and compile and this caused issues um okay we don't need this oh we do okay no problem we're gonna get the enemy draw weapon macro and connect it over wait let me check something we want to check the blocking in the player yeah we're not gonna need the lower one i think Wait, how do we stop blocking? Oh, okay. It's gonna be simple. So, since the enemy doesn't need to be holding the block button, what we are gonna do is we are gonna... Wait. We're gonna connect this to an output, like this. And we're gonna go back to the enemy blocking, yeah, like this. And yeah, if for some reason the enemy has to block without having the, like without being next to the character, they will draw their weapon, even if it's not drawn. And yeah, after the branch, before playing the animation, the we have a branch. If it's true, we block, like the enemy blocks. If it's false, we set blocking to false and stop the anime montage. And yeah, I think that's how the enemy blocks. Let me check again. No, there's still issues. What exactly is the problem? Yeah, okay, like this. And replace it like this. No, I don't know. We don't need this, I think. Wait, what's this for from? Oh, okay. Okay, let me check it in the other one. It should be in the heavy attacks. Turn to nearest enemy. Okay, so we don't have this macro in our enemy. We are gonna copy it. I don't know. Yeah, we're just gonna copy it for now. Try it out. Try to fix it very quickly. So there's no need for it to be a macro, I think. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna open the BP base and do the same as it because it works great. So let's turn this into a macro. What's it called again? Turn to actor, okay. Collapse to macro. Enemy, turn to actor, M. And inside, we're gonna have this here. And what else do we have here? Okay, so this one is sh should be connected here, like this, target. And back here, where is it? Yeah, 
back here is going to be the nearest enemy as the target and this one like this and i'm also going to fix it in the light attacks so we are going to go back to the event graph light attack oh okay so it's probably not working in the heavy attacks let me check again yeah okay so if we go back to the heavy attacks in the character like the bp base okay i'm lost <laughs> yeah combat heavy attacks Yeah, we have this there, so yeah, there's no need for this. We can just connect it like this for now and it should have less errors. Oh my God, what's wrong now? Yeah, this, this was for checking if the weapon is drawn, but it's really drawn, so we don't need to have, keep it. I just deleted it and if I hit compile this one will have an issue I'm not sure what it is yeah I'm gonna rename this one enemy turn to nearest enemy and I'm gonna copy it and paste it in my light attacks of the enemy before we continue so that we don't get confused like this and inside it should be great now for this one yeah i'm just gonna do it again so we're gonna go to the bp, BP base and copy this whole thing which is if the weapon is not drawn we draw it so yeah and paste it here but we're gonna do the new macro for the enemy wait it's for it's for the false right here yeah. so if it's true we do this and if it's false we draw the weapon then do this and it should be like this and we're gonna collapse it to a macro we're gonna call it I don't know check if weapon if enemy weapon is drawn M and I'm sorry if the names are getting confusing we can just fix them later if we have any problems with them let me check something else um, so over here it only has one output so we're gonna do that inside like this and we're gonna delete the first one yeah great and do this make sure it's ticked now we will go back to the heavy attacks to check if it's working now There should be a problem, I'm not sure what it is yet. So I'm going to try making a brand new play montage node and deleting the old one and I know it's not going to fix anything but yeah no no loss okay it's 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 fixed 
I know this engine is messed up. <laughs> Like unexplainable things happen. So we're gonna do the same over here. We're gonna create a brand new play montage node. And delete the old one. I cannot explain why this isn't like why this is the case. Because I myself don't know. It probably has something to do with, you know, copying the, the everything as it is. So yeah, I think that's the best way to fix it. We're also gonna check if the blocking has anything we need to clean up. Yeah, all right, no problem. And what else? The draw weapon. Yeah, it's okay. You know, the, the gain from using the child blueprint actor is you don't have to create recreate all of those variables and everything when you're copying stuff. So yeah, it's, it's really a blessing. Now we're gonna take a look at the behavior tree again. Oh, I forgot. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Okay, so we here we have our new task. Oh my god, how did I forget? Yeah, where's our new task? Yeah, over here. And we're just gonna get a light attack. We're gonna get heavy attack. Technically, we're getting the ones for the enemy. And we're gonna get block. Enemy block. Wait, what, what did we call the event for it? Enemy blocking. Okay. Yeah, like this. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a branch to ask it whether it's blocking or not. So, or, you know, whatever. So we're gonna get a random boolean with weight. Yeah, with weight. Or no, without weight. Just a random boolean. And if it's false, we want it to block. If it's true, we want to get another branch. Yeah, we're going to type in random boolean again. So if it's not blocking, it's also going to get a random boolean and light and heavy attack. Or we can do the opposite so that we can prior prioritize the attacking before the blocking. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that and add the blocking later like this and after the enemy blocks I think it doesn't matter whether it's true or false so I'm just gonna make it true yeah I think yeah I'm gonna do this anyway so we want to add a delay after it's done attacking and blocking and it's gonna be both true and false, so like this. The duration will be a random float in range. So this is the time it takes for the enemy to attack again, whether, you know, whenever it attacks or not. So, I don't know, maybe every two to five seconds it attacks. We can try out different things. And yeah, when it's completed, you wanna add it here and make sure success is ticked and compile we forgot to add a target so that's the owner and let's try it out if it works or not it does not okay i think i know the problem let me check yeah we needed to add it to the control spawn. What a mistake. The target is the control spawn, spawn, not the owner. Really hope it works now. She's blocking. All right. She attacks. Perfect. She stays locked onto us. Yeah, there's a problem with the 
blocking no not the blocking the getting the enemy so uh, not the enemy the sword so we're gonna cancel that we don't want her to check if the sword is drawn i'm gonna delete that i really hope it works now yeah it's great all right since we replaced the play and play montage we can now just do it without it We're also gonna do the same for blocking. Yeah, great. And I'm gonna delete the entire macro. I don't need it. I'm surprised it's not on the light attack. We also might not need this. So let's try it out and see if we need it or not. Yeah, the blocking animation is really ugly. Girl. Okay, so there's something wrong with the blocking. Let's check it out. Yeah, we might disable this. We don't want to block every time. So, okay, I've got so much stuff opened up. I'm just going to close up a lot of stuff. Oh my god, so much open. Even stuff I'm not using. Yeah, over here. We don't need blocking, so... I don't know. Maybe I can add it as a branch before. Yeah. I'm gonna delete this branch and hook it up, hook up the attacks with the delay. And I'm gonna, you know, let's try it out without blocking and see if it works. Also, I'm pretty sure there are stuff we don't need here, such as the turning to the actor, like to the player, because, you know, we already did the enemy lock-on in the AI controller, so we're gonna try without it. I'm, I'm not gonna delete it, I'm just unhooking it. Like this. Let's try it out now. And she's attacking us without a sword for some reason. Oh, she got the sword now. Yeah, there's something wrong with this. This works now. So we're gonna do the same. We're gonna keep the macro again. We're gonna undo everything until our precious macro is back. I think I forgot to add it for the heavy attacks. Yeah. I'm gonna redo until it's, yeah, over here like this. I'm gonna add it to the heavy attacks and check again. Check if enemy weapon is drawn macro. Like this. Oh, this one is hooked again now. Okay, let's keep keep it and see if it if it's good with it. No, okay, I forgot to disable the blocking again. So, I'm gonna take it here, like this, and do it like this. Let's compile and play. Come on, girl. Please work. Yeah, this is the best setup, I think. If we lock onto her. 
you know, when we add hearing, she can hear us behind her and she won't walk away anymore. Yeah, she, she forgets about us as soon as we uh, go behind her. So I want to check something in the AI controller. Let me see. Did we add the lock on here? Because if we didn't, that might be the problem. Yeah, we didn't. So I'm going to add the lock on. The lock on to will be the pawn honor, I think. Yeah, probably. Will be true. No, not true. Like this. If she sees us, she's locked on. And the target will be. Oh, wait. Okay, let's try it like this. I think we need to get it differently. Anyway, let's try it out. I think the only way is to tell is to disable the behavior tree and try it out without it. So she's got her sword, but she's not locked on. Okay. So we're gonna type in lock on again. Yeah, from this from the control spawn lock on message that was the problem so we're gonna do it like this and the lock on to will be I don't know this I guess yeah the locked on will be whether she sees us or not and let's try it out come on please work I really and I really need to end this video yeah, she's locked on. Now when we get out of her sight, she is no longer locked on. Yeah, perfect. So we're gonna... What's wrong? Come on, stop making us problems. I think this problem is gonna go away later, so yeah, let's just ignore it for now. I'm gonna hook up the... Oh, okay, that problem happened because I un unhooked the behavior tree. When we hook it up again, it's gone. So, yeah, let's try it out with the behavior tree enabled. I really hope she doesn't... She does not put back her sword. Because that would really make me... Cause me a problem. <laughs> what was our blocking button anyway? Yeah, I think it's working properly. There's a problem and that is... Oh, okay, it's not a problem. I thought that she would stop walking whenever she attacks, but no, when we walk away from her, she will follow us perfectly. Oh my god, this is perfect. But the heavy attacks aren't working. I don't know. I didn't optimize them too properly. Let's check again. Random boolean. If it's true. Yeah. Like this. Uh, why is it not working? I'm not sure. We're going to keep the blocking. But we're not going to enable it now. I really, really need to end this video. It's been way too long since I started working on it. So let's test it out one last time. Yeah, I think the delay is causing a problem. I'm not sure what it is. So let's not do it.
let's just go straight to light attack and when she stops like she doesn't stop because we want to see if the combos are working or not yeah they are but she's doing them too fast so yeah I'm gonna add a small delay so maybe between yeah just zero point I don't know eight seconds like this and hit play okay now she's only doing light attacks like the first attack in the combo so I don't know one second I guess it actually depends on the length of each animation so I don't know some of them are two seconds oh we have two seconds until the attack count is set to zero again for the I'm not sure which one yeah we need to revise this again <laughs> so yeah I think we are safe with 1.5 seconds for the delay No, we're not. Okay. And you know, there is something more I want to do. And that is fix the collision for the camera. You know what? Let's just save it for the next video. I don't want to do this right now. Yeah, I'm going to save. And that was it for the video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. In this video we overhauled the enemy AI completely and it was a lot of hard work for me to record this video because there is so much stuff to keep track of so make sure that you like the video and subscribe if you're not subscribed because I'm trying to reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers so yeah guys we can finally now add the enemy and player health and you know make this an actual game so I really hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.